Panic They Live and welcome to the Spook Nook. Um, so my name is Suki, some of you may also know me as Alice apparently, and if you are here, thank you for joining us for our first video. Um, it is a pattern support video for my just released sock pattern, the Kasirnin Sock. So. If you have picked up a copy of the pattern, thank you so much. I really hope that you enjoy knitting it. I really enjoyed designing it. Um, so these are a sock um, that I frequently knit when I am gift knitting socks. It's a pattern that I've been working for years um, when I'm making gift knits for people. So I figured it was finally time to write it down um, so that I could share it with the world that way. So the Kasirnin sock gets its name from these little uh, twisted faux cable columns that run from the ankle all the way down to the toe. Um, they are a really, really simple technique, as you will see, that is applicable to loads of different patterns. You can basically stick it in anywhere where you would normally have a two by one ribbing. Um, you can see it does not affect the stretchiness of the socks at all. So these are a really, really stretchy sock. Um, it also um, works really, really well on other things that need to stretch like hats. Um, but like I say, this is a pattern that I really personally really enjoy knitting. Um, I really hope you do too. So let's go over and have, we're gonna move over to my desk. We're gonna have a look at it a little bit more closely to see how exactly we do this stitch. And then I will rejoin you uh, at the end just with all of the details. So. so we are now going to take a closer look at uh, this particular stitch here. So this is the faux cable stitch that gives the Kasirnin sock its name. So the name means uh, like a twist or kink in a piece of rope, Osgoelga, so in Irish. Um, and it felt like the only appropriate name for this particular pattern as a result. So um, as you can see from this pair I made earlier, um, having a little Blue Peter moment, um, this is a really, really stretchy um, sock pattern. It's ribbing almost all over uh, with the exception of the sole of the sock. Um, so it's really, really comfortable. Um, um, but they're also quite versatile and the uh, little kink or twist uh, columns that we have in these just add a nice little bit of variation. Um, they kind of just break up the uniformity of having ribbing and add a little bit of interest. Um, but it also means that they are a great sock for playing around with different yarns. Um, so as you can see here, they work really nicely in self-striping yarns. Um, there's also an option to have a contrast cuff, heel or toe, um, whether that's in one colour or in many, many different colours, that is completely up to you. So um, it is a very versatile sock pattern, but it's also really, really beginner friendly. And this is, this particular stitch is a really, really nice one to add, particularly into a beginner knitter's repertoire. Um, it just adds a little bit of allows you to put a little bit of flair into projects that might be predominantly ribbing um, without compromising the comfort or stretchiness because they it because they are themselves still knit to pearl one they really retain the stretchiness that you want um, in those kind of cozy patterns like socks or hats so um, this is Wolfman he's our moral support. Uh, he doesn't know how to knit and he's learning, so that's what he's here for. Uh, so, um, as you can see, I'm working this on a sample swatch. This is, these are 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, I normally work my socks on double pointed needles. If you work them on, um, on circulars using magic loop method, um, that is also absolutely perfect. So I'm working these on the materials called for in the pattern. Um, so like I say, 2.25s and with finger and white yarn. Um, obviously this stitch can be integrated into any pattern on any size needle with any weight yarn. Um, but just for the sake of continuity and seeing how they look like in the socks, that's what we're gonna use today. 
So, the setup row for these, you will have all, working in the pattern, you will have set, placed stitch markers to indicate where your two um, faux cable columns are going to go. Um, for the purposes of this, we're actually doing it a little bit differently, so we're not working the two of them together. I'm going to show you two of these faux cable columns. Um, going in the manner that they do in the Kasirni pattern. So that is where your left hand stitch will cross over your right hand stitch. So it's a kind of right leaning um, crossover. Um, but I'm also going to show you how to do it the other way around as well. Um, please feel free to send me as many spooky does cables both ways jokes as possible. Um, so this is, this doesn't appear in the pattern, but it's still, um, if, we're gonna, if I'm gonna teach you how to do it one way, I might as well teach you how to do it the other way as well. Um, so this is if you want your cable, or your faux cable rather, to be um, right over left. Um, and that can also be a really fun one to throw into patterns as well, or combinations of the two of them. Um, it's a really lovely, simple way to play with um, different direction cables without the um, fiddliness of actually needing cable needles because if you're working socks on multiple DPNs bringing cable needles into the equation just causes a lot of extra hassle. Um, so to get started you're going to work up to your faux cables in your knit to purl one ribbing and then when we get to your our first faux cable uh, you are going to knit into the front of the second stitch on your left hand needle. So we're going to work into the front of this, we're going to leave it on the needle and then we're going to work into our first stitch and then we're going to slip both of them off together. So I'll show you that. So we're going to work into the front of the second stitch on our needle. We're going to knit that, we're going to leave it on the needle we're going to knit into the first stitch on our left hand needle and then we're going to slip those two stitches off the needle together and that's literally that creates the little twist in those stitches there and so we'll work to our next one and we'll have a look at that stitch again so working in two by one ribbing and then we are going to knit into that the front of that second stitch, leave it on the needle, knit into the first stitch, and then we're just going to slip those two off together. If you want to do it the other way around, we're just going to work our way up there. So working in two by one ribbing, in the Kasirnin pattern it is used completely on two by one ribbing. You can obviously integrate this into anything, um, this particular stitch into anything that has two knit stitches together. Um, so whether that was two by two ribbing or whatever you want. Um, I use it a lot for hats. Um, so when we want to do it the other way around, so if instead of having the left crossing over the right stitch, if you want it to be the right crossing over the left. Instead of knitting into the front of the second stitch, we are going to knit into the back instead. And that is literally the only thing that's different. So we knit into the back of the second stitch, then we knit into the front of the first stitch, and we slip them off together as before. And then proceed. Once you have finished your um, crossover row, so that faux cable row there, um, you will then proceed to knit in your knit two purl one ribbing for the next two or three rows. It's completely up to you. Um, if you prefer a slightly longer looking um, faux cable, like in this one here, um, go for um, three rows of knit two purl one. Um, ribbing if you'd like them to be a little bit more compact which is normally what I do for the smaller sizes in this sock pattern so like this 
um, where it's a little bit shorter and a little bit more the twist effectively looks a little tighter um, that I would go for just two rows of knit two purl one ribbing um, so we're just going to look at that now and how that works up and that's really it it is a really really simple um, way to add a little bit of interest into your into your ribbing. Um, I do love how ribbing looks on its own, but obviously I am a staunch lover of uh, cables. Cable knitting is really my favorite thing to do, um, more so than color work, more so than anything else. So being able to fit um, any kind of cable pattern into socks, whether that's uh, the sort that calls for an additional cable needle or not. I'm just I'm all over that. So you can see it is really a Very very simple stitch to do um, But it's quite nice So we just work in that knit two Pearl one and that's it So thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I really hope that that made sense. Um, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to comment below. Um, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram um, or you know any of the other ways that you communicate. If you do send a message in a bottle or a carrier pigeon, uh, it might take a little bit longer for me to get back to you, but I will do my best. Um, if you have fallen utterly in love with this orange yarn <laughs> that I was using, um, a very seasonally appropriate choice. Um, and you want to make pumpkin spice latte coloured Kasumian socks, please do. Um, this is Real Falati Baby Supremo. Um, I think the colour is just called orange. Um, you can also work it in, like I say, you can work these socks in whatever you want. Um, and also apply this little twist, the little kink or kasirin, uh, to whatever patterns you want. Um, if you want to check out any of the other patterns that I have, if you are joining me and you haven't gotten a copy of the pattern yet, uh, you can do so at my Etsy shop or on Ribbler. Uh, I will include links to those below. Um, they also have all the details of the yarns used by myself for the samples and by my lovely testers. Um, if you want to check it out on um, Instagram, you can also follow all of my lovely testers there. I'll include all of their information and also me as well, please, if you would like to see uh, what I'm up to and what I'm knitting. Um, I update there regularly. This is the first video that I've done for the Spook Books YouTube. Hopefully uh, there will be more in the future. There will be more knitting, more crafts. I might potentially even do some interviews. Who knows? Um, but for the moment, um, it's going to be a place for pattern support. And if you have any questions, hit me up. If you have enjoyed this tutorial and you would like to see what I get up to next, um, please hit like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, hopefully we will do some more knitting and there will be some more uh, spooky patterns. Um, in the meantime, uh, stay safe, stay spooky, and happy knitting! Yes! Transition! Desk transition to the desk! Are you laughing at me? Yeah, that was right. <laughs>